Hi, I'm Jennifer Lee, Admin Evangelist, and this is How I Solved It. In today's episode, Haley shows us how you can show off your app building skills by building your resume in Salesforce. Today, I'm with Haley Teller, founding partner and the head of services at Navigators and a returning guest to How I Solved It. Welcome back, Haley. Thank you, Jen. All right, so in case our viewers didn't catch your first How I Solved It episode, share with us who Haley is and a little bit about your Salesforce journey. Sure, so I'm an accidental admin, like most of us are. Uh, I started out in a nonprofit that adopted Salesforce. So I got to be a part of that implementation and I just fell in love with the platform. Uh, After spending a while in-house, I eventually made the switch to consulting and I love being able to work with all different kinds of organizations, nonprofits, foundations, and all of their use cases on the platform. It's a whole lot of fun to be able to see all these different ways to use Salesforce. Great. So you recently went out on your own with a partner and created a new company called Navigators. Can you tell us a little bit more about your company? Absolutely. So we're a brand new uh, implementation partner, and we specialize in nonprofits, foundations, and public sector solutions in Salesforce. And we're very passionate about sustainability, obviously the normal type of sustainability we talk about, but really about sustainable solutions on the platform. So we love working with clients, customers, and organizations that are really focused on finding solutions that will be with them through the long haul, that will scale and give them the flexibility to solve not just the problems they have today, but the problems that they'll have tomorrow. Great. So I know you're a retired senior chief petty officer and pretty involved with the military Ohana. So can you tell us about programs like Meredivis and (laughs) Salesforce military that our uh, vets can get involved in? Yeah, absolutely. So Salesforce military, if you register with Salesforce military as a vet who's looking for an opportunity in the ecosystem, and this counts for spouses too. So spouses of service members or veterans also qualify. If you complete trailhead training, you'll get a free voucher in order to complete your certification. And then there are a lot of programs out there like Meravis who use what's already been created by Salesforce Military, and they create cohorts of people that are going through training together. And they supplement what's already there with trailhead and with official training, with mentorship and coaches to guide people through the full process, not just certification, but beyond and help them find jobs in the Salesforce ecosystem. I volunteer as a coach, so I mentor people through those programs, and I've taught the occasional full class as well. Cool. All right. So, Haley, you reached out to me about an idea you had for how I solved an episode. So it's not a business problem you're solving for. So share with us your idea with the audience. Yeah, it's not. So this is a little different than the typical how I solved it, I think. And this really comes out of my experience with helping people who are transitioning into the ecosystem. We all struggle when we're first getting started with demonstrating some level of experience. And there's a temptation out there to go and volunteer with a nonprofit or to try to find opportunities through various different types types of volunteer matching services. But sometimes that cannot be the best for everyone. Um, Nonprofits sometimes also need more staying power than a typical volunteer, or maybe the use case is a bit more complex. And there's all the added parts of the nonprofit success back on top of that. Instead, what I'm suggesting, as many smart people before me have, solve the problems that you already have, right? So if the whole point is to demonstrate your experience, I'm suggesting build something on Salesforce, specifically a public community. I've created one that showcases my resume so people can go and see my speaking engagements and the different roles that I've had. And I can easily share this link and communicate in the process a lot of experience and abilities on the platform. Wow, this is really cool. So Haley, you know admins like to nerd out and set up, so show us how you built this. Well, let's definitely nerd out then. I'm gonna share my screen. So most people probably know already that they can sign up for a free dev org, but if you don't know, I'm gonna clue you in on an amazing resource that's really gonna help you out. If you go to developer.salesforce.com, you can sign up for a free dev org. And these are really similar to production orgs. They're just a bit more limited. So they're actually used for training and development. Once we have our our dev org, we can then go and create an app. So what you're seeing is my little resume app inside of Salesforce. 
And you can get really creative here, right? In my case, in my resume, I really wanted to showcase the different roles that I'd had, which you see here on my custom homepage. But I also wanted to talk about speaking, speaking engagements and writing in addition to my credentials. So I created a set of custom objects that store this information. And on each of these speaking engagements and writing engagements, I also have a look up to the role I held when I actually did that thing. So then you can kind of look at all of it in context. So let's look at a particular role. If we go back to, and you can sort them by date, and it kind of tells a story essentially of my, of my history, and we can also see my volunteer positions. If we go back to any one of these positions, we can see essentially what I was doing during that stage. So let's take a look at, at a solution architect role. I was really busy speaking <laughs> when I was in this particular role. So I really like how it contextualizes it. And then of course, like most everybody, I'm very proud of my credentials. So I created a whole section just for those. And I love looking at these in the context with the images. And here's where you can really get creative. All this is is a free component that I downloaded from the App Exchange. If you haven't tried this yet, there's a ton of free stuff that works as lightning components and can also work in communities. And you can really spice your pages up. And then this is me playing around with a data table component from unofficialsf.com. Again, a bunch of really fun free stuff to spice up your org. Basically, I'm just showing off by styling some creative lightning pages. And this might be really great to show people. Well, that's not bad, but what would be really awesome is if I could display it publicly as a community. Well, to do that, I have to create a community first. So if you're new to communities, you do this in digital experiences because actually I think they're called experience cloud sites now, right? So you set up, essentially you have to enable it in the settings. And yes, this is in a dev org. So you can do this in this very limited dev org and you can enable essentially creating an experience workspace and then you create a site. So this is mine. When you first start creating the sites, you'll get the opportunity to select a template. Most community sites are based on some sort of a template, uh, unless you're going to create one completely from scratch, which I don't recommend in this use case because that would be an awful lot of work. But here in the dev org, we can see there's all kinds of templates we can choose from. So depending on how you designed your resume app, you may want to read up on these, play with a few different templates, see what makes sense in your use case. I chose the most flexible and just went with a build your own. And then lastly, you're going to have to think through sharing. So sharing is a little bit different in a community than it is inside of main Salesforce. And this may be the first opportunity you've ever had to configure what's called default external access. We're looking at sharing settings, also known as organization-wide defaults. And this is where we say, this is the default level of access. You've probably never had to configure this before, but here you can set things to be probably mostly private. And then if you want to show them conditionally, you can do that. So in my case, if we go back to my roles, you'll see that on several of these, I have a pick list, right, that shows the status. So for me, I want to be able to create them essentially in a draft mode, fiddle with them a little bit until I'm ready to show them in the community. So that means I need conditional visibility. In order to do that, I create a custom sharing role. So custom sharing roles, exist on the object all the way underneath those organization-wide defaults. We have to scroll all the way down. They're all in order. Here is my custom sharing role, sharing rule for the object role. Let's take a look. In this case, I just called it guest user, right? And all I'm really saying here is I'm setting the condition. If the status doesn't equal draft, then go ahead and show it as a read only. And I'm saying who I specifically want to share it with. Let's make this a little bit bigger because it's a bit of an eye chart. My guest site user. Anybody who visits a community is a guest if they're not authenticated. So they haven't logged in. In this case, everyone who visits my resume site is not an authenticated user. So they all get my default profile for guest users. So sharing roles combined with sharing settings and default external access 
and my custom guest user profile all work together to decide what they can see. So let's take a look at the end result, shall we? I'm kind of proud of this. <laughs> Here's an image I took at the Moscone during my first Dreamforce. So I always really enjoy looking at that as a banner. I've got a home page. And here again, the point here is to show what I can do. So I've created just a little screen flow that lets people sign my virtual guest book. And they can even check the box if they'd like me to reach out. Now, because it's a community, they can browse all these records just the same as if they were in my Salesforce org. So we can go through and look at all these different roles and see information about that role. So this is the one I have now as the founding partner of Navigators. Just getting started, so there's not that much to see, right? But they could see all of these details. Let's say they really want to look at credentials. Here's where doing the work of adding all these images really pays off. Because in the community, you can style the pages just the same as you can in Salesforce. So here I've added some images to make it a bit more fun. And then say on my speaking engagements, we can actually come in and look at things like slides that are related to it, and in some cases, actually download some of the content. I have a few places where I have links. And then I think if we look in here, look, it's my how I sold it from the last time we met. <laughs> of course, I would have this in here. So people can click on it and see a little bit more information about the last time we got together. All this works together to give me a public place to show off my skills maybe tell a story about different types of speaking engagements. You could make this about anything. So you could have tools that you're good at. You could put your socials in here, but it's a wonderful way to showcase all of that. The only catch, of course, once you deploy it, is it has a very long URL. So you might want to create a bit.ly, something to make it a bit easier in order to share your new public community. And that's how I felt it. All I could say is, wow, <laughs> this is amazing, Haley. Just a quick question. How long did it take for you to put this all together? Oh, well, this is the sort of thing I work a little bit on <laughs> over time. When I first started it, it was literally just a listing of roles. And then it started to hit me, hey, most of the time when I speak, there's a link out there. I should put that in my community. And then mm -hmm. it just took off from there. So it's the sort of thing that I think about once a month, once every couple months, and update with my latest information. Well, this is great. And um, I really appreciate you showing us how you use your app building skills in Salesforce, along with Experience Cloud, to really demonstrate your Salesforce experience in solving your own use case, showcasing your re resume, your speaking abilities, and all of that. So this is a great example of how admins out there can really get deep into <laughs> building apps and then showing your potential future employer. What better way than to do it on the platform? <laughs> Great. Well, thank you again, Haley, for being a returning guest on How I Solved It. And I look forward to you coming back. Thank you. You just saw how Haley put her app building skills to work by creating a site using Experience Cloud to showcase her resume. Way to exercise those configuration skills, Haley. You can always find videos like this at admin.salesforce.com and also by subscribing to our YouTube channel, Salesforce Admins, so you will never miss another episode of How I Solved It. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Awesome Admin!